welcome to Stampscaping 101. We're going to try a half sheet of the um, inkjet glow-in-the-dark paper. Okay, now this is a really dynamic paper to work with. I hesitate to call it paper, though, because, I mean, it, it really is like using vinyl. I mean, you can see it right here, but they call it paper in the description, so I guess I'll refer to it as that. But it took the Brilliance ink beautifully, okay? Now, I did kind of wipe that right there. This is dry right here um, to the touch, but if you do wipe it, it, it does kind of wipe off. So we'll have to spray seal this, but we're going to have to be careful about what we spray seal it with. Like, I don't know if I spray it with a UV, you know, maybe it negates the, uh, the glow-in-the-dark aspect of it, but I mean, it's not that fragile, okay? I'm touching it right here, and it's not just, you know, removing the ink off of it. But if you scrape it, it is, you know, it, it's, it's subject to removal, you know, by doing that, okay? Now, I tried um, some dye-based ink on a little corner of a piece of this, and it just kind of wiped off. It does stain it, though, um, but I just think that the thicker style of Brilliance ink is going to, you know, kind of, uh, it'll achieve much you know, to a, 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 a higher degree of the things that we're going after, at least in terms of how I'm using the uh, the uh, the surface and inks and the, the type of look I'm going after, okay? All right, so I'm going to use nature set number eight here. I'm just using the, uh, the wood-mounted versions of these just so you can see what's happening, you know? If I use the unmounted versions, it's a little bit more difficult to see, um, kind of follow along with my registration of it. Okay, now, the nature of this glow-in-the-dark surface right here, it's one of the first times I, I think that I'm actually dealing with light, or, you know, if you use this paper, we're, we're dealing with light, okay? We're usually dealing with the illusion of reflected light, okay? I'm usually stamping something like this out in white paper, and, you, you know, you're not going to be able to see this in, you know, the dark, so... Um, this being illuminated, you know, and having that light coming from within the card, literally, as opposed to, you know, um, by, you know, via contrast using dark colors on white pieces of paper, um, I thought we can use this for a northern lights type of look. I mean, doesn't that sound like fun in general? You switch off the lights and you have this glowing, you know, represent, you know, representation, the, uh, the sky there. So I thought I would do something like that. And going with some kind of bolder imagery from uh, the Lakeside um, Cove Large type of thing would be good for that. Now, here's the thing. If I just stamp these all in here, okay, everything is going to be glowing, okay? All the reflections in here, everything, okay? Now, if I want that northern light, you know, area in the sky to be the thing that's kind of capturing our attention... I have to make the rest of the scene kind of dark. Okay, so if I was going with a land mass or something like that and I had northern lights up here, if I didn't color in, you know, the land down here, it would be really glowing just the same as the lights. So, that being said, when you do any type of body of water, you can have an excuse of anything in the sky being replicated, repeated, down in the water as a reflection, okay? So it's perfect for this type of um, scenario, I think. All right, so that being said, let's get on with it. Okay, I have 100% cotton cotton ball. And like I said in my previous video, if you watched it, I, this paper really, being that it's an inkjet uh, paper, I guess, I guess it's, it's designed to take ink. Now that surprised me because I forgot that it was an inkjet um, paper um, when I was doing my last scene. Um... But, I mean, naturally, if it's an inkjet printer, paper, or designed for that, then, I mean, it has to take ink, you know, pretty decently, okay? All right, so I'm going with these vertical um, types of applications, and where we do not apply the ink, it's going to represent those kind of curtainy types of um, uh, formations, okay? Now, get you got to get the kind of the feel of this. This is... I don't know, when I have a good swatch of ink on here, it seems to apply really nicely. Um, but as I'm doing this, if I have a very little, um, you know, low amount of ink on here, I can really feel it dragging, okay? But maybe that's good for some um, parts of it. So I think, that, you know, the, uh, the trick to this is going to be the buildup of ink, okay? Um, just kind of develop your things, and don't worry too much about 
streaks, unevenness, etc. Okay, especially early on because we'll we should be able to um, smooth things out and add like that as we go. Okay. All right. Now I don't like that streak right in there. Let's see if I can kind of remove it a little bit. I'm just taking a clean cotton ball and great this is interesting you know I'm really having to put a lot of uh, pressure on there to kind of buff that out right there so it did stain it but look how you know this is a lot of this uh, ink in here is pretty well set okay which is a good thing so let's see let's see if we can blend some of this out from the inside out then okay yeah. Oh, this is perfect here. Okay. So let's see. See right there where I kind of streak back in. That was one swipe with the cotton ball. Okay. So some of these um, curtains here, I want to kind of extend up, you know, in a reverse type. Oh, this is perfect right here. Okay. So when we do that, you just kind of switch off to a clean part. See, these right here, getting the, you know, the reverse um, kind of stroke going, you know, the, having the curtains defined by just the black, I wasn't getting, you know, a really good look with that. But I can come back in here into the light and get that streak going, and that looks much more um, kind of graceful of a, a curtain like that, like those northern lights, okay? Now, I do my own version of Northern Lights, too. Usually it's this curtain kind of up in the sky, and it's darker below, and you have this kind of, it's like a wavelength or something like that. I leave it lighter down here, because if I make this all dark behind my trees, we're not going to be able to see the tree's silhouette on here, okay? So a lot of times I just leave it a little bit lighter down here, okay? All right, so that being said, because we can do that, that really frees me up here in terms of my applications here. Um, I can apply a lot more with the freedom, you know, or with the knowledge of knowing that I can remove um, to some degree. I don't, you know, I don't think I'm going to remove all of it. I don't know, maybe you can take a wet, paper, you know, sponge and wipe it all out. I don't know, you know, the Brilliant Sinks are water-based. They have some kind of quick-drying component in them, though. So I don't know if they would come off, you know, super clean, but, you know, you can probably remove it to some degree. All right, so I still want a little bit more tone in here. So it's kind of, you know, this little bit of a, a circular process of addition, subtraction, and then addition again. Okay, now I'm really familiar with this type of process right here. Because I do that on my foils. I add, then I subtract, then I add in again until I get kind of the look that I'm going after. All right, so coming in, see, I'm coming in with just more tone like this with the knowledge that I'm going to streak back into it, okay? But I just, I just want some areas a little bit darker. All right, I think that is it. Okay, so let's Give this a try here. We can even try with a with a paintbrush too. Okay, this is a top and bottom. All right, let's take a paintbrush here and let's see if we can kind of influence something in here. Gosh, that is removing like a really light amount right there. I don't know if you saw that. Here, let's see. Let me go into this. Uh, well, let let me work the. Uh, top area of the scene okay so let's go like this I just can't kind of keep it going in one area like this okay let's go into this area right here I think what's happening is I'm getting ink on my brush tip let's brush it off like this and let's start off in the clean area and then we're going to sweep into the, uh, the inked area okay
Yeah, so I keep just turning my cotton ball to uh, the angle. Yeah. Very smudgy. Okay, now that is that. Very, very smudgy. And I'm not sure if I want it that smudgy, okay? So what I'm doing is we're going back and we're just kind of filling in a little bit more. So addition, subtraction, addition, subtraction. And remember, this isn't kind of the end result here, okay? We're going to be doing additional things in here. So again, we're not looking at this as the finished you know, product of the you know the the scene we're we're going after. So let's see if this is sufficiently inked. One of the things I do um, when I have a light area like that is I don't ink this portion of the lakeside cove. Okay. And in addition to that, you can kind of wipe off a little bit of this line down here so you don't have this kind of hard line, especially when it's being stamped up here and the line would be um, apparent. If you're doing it below the bottom portion, then you don't worry about that. Okay, let's see. Make sure I have enough ink on there. like so. Plenty of pressure in the interior. Go left, center, right. Okay, nice and flat. Don't rock it though. Okay. Alright. Looks pretty good as far as impressions go on this type of paper, you know. I, I don't know, I'm surprised because it's it does have that plasticky vinyl feel to it, you know, but it is, you know, an inkjet paper, so uh things should print well, you know, really well on it, you know, in terms of stamping. Stamping should be a you know, a snap for that. Okay, now all of this, I mean, you could heat set this um, all, you know, before you stamp this out. You can apply some inks and heat set and apply some inks, you know, if you really want it to be set, if you're, you know, struggling with um, um, the application of that black back. And I like some of it is coming up, um, you know, as you're applying it, then heat set it, then, you know, just add another layer on there. Okay, let's add some foreground in here. All right. Oh yeah, I was going to do some splatter painting on here before I stamp this out. Oh, let's just do it afterwards. Some gets in front of the imagery. You know, we splatter paint this. If it goes in front of the imagery or on top of, then it represents stars and snowfall, okay? If you splatter paint it in the background, stamp the imagery over it, it'd probably represent just stars. Okay, this is the rocks and pines and rocks stamp. All right. See this, by the time we stamp all this stuff in there, like if this is, you know, wasn't even over here, it, I don't know. It, it, I don't think it really matters by the time you stamp your imagery in there. I don't know if I need this one over here. It's pretty dark on the outside, but might as well. All right, there we have that. I think that should look pretty uh, dramatic, um, you know, when we flip off the lights here. Okay. Now, I 
think I am going to add in some of this extra tone into here, okay? Uh, now that we have our imagery. Now, don't go into it with like, like a big blob application over your rocks. I mean, you, we, you know, we want that the imagery to stand out. So what I'm doing is I'm removing a lot of this ink until I get it to where it's, it's almost like you're adding like a powder to it. You know, think about it like you have a charcoal pencil or something like that. Be careful on here. This is a little bit damp too, but I don't know, seeing how this ink um, kind of responds to this paper. See, I'm just tapping it on here, and it's it's going on just fine. Um, it's not lifting my imagery off. You know, this ink, I don't know, the paper works really quite well in terms of it setting into the scene, um, or the paper, you know, fairly quickly. Okay, so I'm putting a little bit of this tone on my... Rocks, okay, so I don't know if you can tell, but can you see that? Where, you know, some of those rocks are now covered with, you know, just like a gray scale, okay? Now take off enough, and like I said, you know, um, sometimes people aren't used to kind of using kind of lighter amounts of their existing um, uh, media. So they're not used to using, okay, if you're using black, they're not used to getting like a 2% gray out of it. So sometimes you tap it down and think, oh wait, where's the black, you know? And, uh, you know, even though they know kind of the theory, but it, it feels weird, you know, to be getting, you know, just less of an existing color, okay? Adding a little bit blacker um, shadows on the side here. So I'm kind of anchoring down that imagery in there, too, by giving um, the rocks a little bit more of a shadow in here, like so, okay. Now I'm being really careful, because I have a little bit of a blob area on this cotton ball, so I want to be careful not to apply that blob of ink. So just take it slow, you know. Sometimes with a couple taps you can't even see what you're doing. But then, as you build it up, you know, it starts to kind of appear. It's like having something on a, a dial of like a, you know, a hundred stops or something like that. Okay, it's like you're going a little bit darker, a little bit darker, a little bit darker, a little bit darker, okay? So you get the end result that you're going after, after like 20 taps as opposed to one. Okay. Boy, that looks pretty good there. I like the, the shading in here. I like the look of this even without it, you know, um, kind of glowing in the dark yet. Okay. Now I put a couple little scrapes in here and fingerprints, you know, from handling. So I'm just going in here and filling that back up again. Okay. See my fingers aren't here, you know, from touching this. Ink, they're pretty inky. I don't know. Embrace the, uh, embrace the process. All right. Now, I think I am going to add in this oak branch in here. But I'm going to add it in after I splatter paint. So we'll just kind of layer things in here, okay? Um, all right. This is a folk art, glow-in-the-dark paint. <laughs> I just scraped that. It's going to be happening all throughout the process, you know. There you go. Fill that back up like that. It says to shake this up, I think. I don't know if it... Yeah, it makes well before use. Okay. This paint is pretty thick, so um, it apply it, it doesn't splatter to me as nicely as the bleed-proof white, which I can make any consistency that I want. But with this, you can water it down, I'm sure. But I don't... The effectiveness in terms of the glow-in-the-dark aspect of it 
it's not going to be as strong, so we want to have this at its kind of strongest um, um, saturation. Okay, so we'll go like that. And maybe I'll just spray it up here in the sky. I'm not sure if I'll do it down in the, uh, down below. You know, because otherwise it'd be like glowing snow. Which, you know, that, that, that's fine too. It'd be kind of cool, but let's just kind of spray it up in the sky, I think. I don't know, you can, we can put a couple little dots down here too. Represents maybe, uh, um, like reflect you know, the reflections of the stars up above. I don't know. I'm not going to be worried about it if I do get, you know, a few spots down here, though. Okay, so that is up there. It really feels weird for me because I'm so used to, you know, splatter painting the th much thinner Dr. Martens, but... So I have to put a little bit of extra kind of splatter painting muscle into it, you know, and I engage more of the bristles... It's thicker, so. Um, it's thicker, so I don't get as much mileage out of um, one kind of loading up of the, uh, the brush. Okay. And this is a waterproof paint here, so. Um, but do, if you're using it on your brush, go and wash it off after you know, pretty quickly, because so it won't kind of, uh, I don't know, I don't, I don't think it goes back into solution very easily. Okay, let me try to get a little of this down here in the water for a reflection. I don't know if it'll show at all, okay? All right, so that being said, I'm going to wash this off, and that'll give that paint just, you know, a few mo uh, you know, moments to, uh, to dry, and then we'll stamp over that. All right, I am back, and I just tested something. I just put a little bit of a water on a little cotton ball, and see, there's like a little that streak right there that I didn't want, and that really just comes right off with a little bit of water like that. Okay, <laughs> boy, you, you don't have any water, and it really stays on there pretty good. So, all right. And I just touched over here, so I don't know. Maybe it'd be a good idea to heat set some of this here as I'm working on it. Okay, but I don't feel like heat setting right now. I haven't heat set this yet, though. Okay, I don't know. I may just I'd be a little bit concerned about that kind of plasticky aspect of it. I don't know if I need to worry about that, though, because I think, I don't know, when things go through a inkjet printer, do, the, do those heat up? I'm not sure. I thought they were a little bit warm. I'm not sure. Maybe I'm thinking of laser printer or something like that. I'm not sure. Okay, so a little bit of overhang here. And there are deciduous trees, you know, with, uh, you know, evergreens. I just like it as a different textural kind of addition to all the pines with this type of uh, system here. All right. There we go. Kind of caps off the tops in terms of recomposition, doesn't it? All right. Now, I thought about, this doesn't come in nature set number eight, but you can add other types of things in here. Um, this area in here, I don't know, it's open for like a quote or something like that. I think, you know, having a quote stamp in with this glow-in-the-dark um, type of uh, material would be appropriate and it'd make it sometimes even more dramatic when you have wording going on. But let's just put a little bit of a canoeist going out and really enjoying just kind of wiping off some of those reflection or the shadows down here and I'll put them I'll go a little bit off center 
Don't use as much pressure on tiny little um, stamps as you do with big stamps. Okay, otherwise they'll, they'll look squashed. Okay. So like that. <laughs> I'm really used to going in and adding in like little highlights and things like that, but um, you know, this is glow in the dark stuff, so I don't, you know, unless we have a glow in the dark pen, paint pen, I, don't know, I should look into that sometime and, you know, adding little types of marks like that. So, what we'll do, oh, I need to go and wash this brush off right here, but let's see. Yeah, that's not remove anything. You could probably dip this into water or something like that and go for some extra touches, but I think that looks good enough like that. All right, I've turned off my studio. Um, I don't know, what do you have? Flood lamps or whatever. And I just have one incandescent bulb going right now. And what I will do is I will hold up the paper to the bulb to get this to charge up here a little bit. It was just a swing arm lamp here. And we'll get this good and charged up and we'll take a look. I feel the anticipation, uh, in, I'm talking about inside me. Okay, so that is charged up and let's take a look. It's kind of interesting, isn't it? <laughs> I'm looking in here, I'm looking to see if, uh, let's see. I don't know if I see any of those little stars, and I, I wasn't sure if I would be able to because I was thinking the paper could be like so bright, okay, that we might not be able to see it. Okay, let's see something right here. Woo! What the glare. Okay, let's try something right here, okay? Um, let's go with... Okay, now we can do it a couple different ways here. We can do... Um, some little, you know, just have some, any type of thing, and do a little swirl into the, uh, the paper. I have these scratch knives here that I use for, um, you know, stamp board, okay? So I'm going to remove some little areas uh, in the paper that will represent stars, okay, to expose you know, that surface. And this will add in a little bit of extra texture as well, too, which is kind of cool. I'll make some of these little stars a little bit bigger. Kind of cluster them a little bit, too, you know, maybe. So I have some, you know, if you can't tell where the, uh, like I can't tell where some of that oak branch impression is, it doesn't matter, just add it in anywhere then. Okay, and another one like this. Now maybe just, I mean I covered up a lot of that area where I was, I splatter painted, so, but I can't really see it too much because this paper is just so bright. In the test yesterday, or when was it? Was it yesterday or two days ago? Can't even remember. Um, that glow in the dark paint works pretty well, but it's just very subtle when you're just kind of doing it, you know, with a little tiny bit of a, you know, splatter painting. You know, we're talking about tiny little specks of paint. Okay, now let's see. I've touched on a couple of these areas here, and like I said, this stuff will. I think I I feel better about letting this kind of just air dry on its own than heat setting it, you know, because of that kind of vinyl-y, at least to the touch nature of it. I think it's vinyl. Okay. If you're using this in an inkjet printer, I would think that, let me see, inkjet printers, do they have a, do any of them have a cartridge, or do, is it just all strictly um, manual feed. 
<laughs> but I would think you'd want to manually feed this through. Okay, I'm just kind of taking a look at it here, and I'm getting a little bit bolder with some of these stars going even bigger, yeah, just because I can't see them very well. You know, they're, I made them too subtle, so. Okay, let's take a look at this again. See that right there? There's all the little specks like that. It all looks it looks better just as even like that. Let's take a look and let's get this charged up again. We'll just go a couple seconds. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that looks better. Look at all those little see those little twinkly bits. When I hold this at it like at a distance, you can't see it as much, but it's what the camera's picking up too. But look at that. <laughs> that. And then there's those little bits down here, too. I can scrape out a few more around here. See, like in these shadows right here. Um, let's scrape out. Let's just do it right now. Those little, those little dots um, really add to it, don't they, from a textual standpoint. Lighting standpoint, too, but just visual interest. Um, these little bits are pretty fun. It's kind of interesting, just uh, usually I'm getting these little dots like this through the process, process of addition, not subtraction, you know, scraping in. I guess we can always do that, though. Scrape in these little bits um, into our inks, even when we're working on just regular paper. I can probably even scratch out a uh, kind of a northern, kind of a north star in here too. Anytime you do something like that, it it kind of gives it a, a little bit more of a kind of a holiday feel. Um, I don't know where I'd do that, but okay, let's see. Well, I don't know. I I think the natural part would you know if I did that would be right up here. Okay, let's see it again. Refinement number, I don't know how many, two or three. Get charging up. Okay. And say I applied more, like right in here and right in here. Uh, here, I'm looking at it again. Let's go. See, anytime you get these large kind of shadow areas, we can get into these areas. Um, we can add visual interest with these little dots. Usually it's with the paint pen, but um, here it's scraping away. Okay, so let's see. I just scraped out some of those. So let's charge those up too. Okay, all right. It's looking better and better, huh? The more kind of those dots we add in there. See that right there? Look at that right in there. Oh, you know what I was thinking about, too, with this glow-in-the-dark? Fireflies. Okay. All right, so there we have it. Um, let's take a look at this under a black light, too. And uh, check that out. All right. All right, there's a black light-ish. Flip this off. <laughs> look at that. Look at those stars. The stars really stand out, don't they? Strong against a black light. All right. Fun stuff. I really enjoy doing these types of things like this. This is really quite spectacular. And um, the black light really lends itself to um, certain types of media and whatnot. But of course, uh, this the very surface being glow-in-the-dark really... Um, is quite spectacular. Let's take this out from here and take a look at that. Yeah. I don't know, really fun stuff. So anyways, um, should you kind of be uh, curious about some, uh, I don't know, an option for some additional kind of dynamic surfaces or whatnot to kind of play around with, this is certainly, t you know, one of those things I would look into. If you're giving these types of, if you're sending cards to uh, kids for birthdays or whatever to, you know, I don't know, we, I think we anticipate, you know, the, someone opening up our card if we're working on it or whatnot, you know, 
and you can say in the card something like, you know, uh, take it and, you know, it's glow in the dark or something like that, you know, and take it and see what it looks like in the dark or whatever. And I think it just makes it kind of that one extra layer of interest, you know, going into it. And it certainly makes it an interactive type of um, um, card uh, for the, your recipient there. And, I mean, if you're working with this type of paper too, I think it would be really fun to uh, do projects with kids. And I think they would really love doing that too. Okay, so anyways, thanks again for watching. And we'll see you on the next